Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. So what have we got? We've got a little bit of coal over that side. I've got another big chunk of coal there that I can dig up, but there's no way for them really to get in here without me pumping oxygen over that side. The bigger the base, the more oxygen I've got to have to go right through all of it if I'm not really careful. So I, I do have to be aware of that. I've got a lot of oxygen up here. And I want, really, to get that oxygen over to this side. That would be helpful. One thing at a time, eh? Let's, let's, let's focus one thing at a time. So I, I've got the coal. I've got that bit. So we want to now go into our plumbing system. We want to go to our liquid pipes. First up is this one. That goes up from there. It goes over to here, and then it wants to go in here. It doesn't want to go up there any longer. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove that one, that one, and that one. That's going to take those out of the system completely. And then instead of having those, we're then going to go into our plumbing over here, liquid pipe, and that is going to go, and it's going to join into there. So then that will run down here. Come along here, it'll go over that one, it'll go over that one, it will run into here, up, over, and into these. Fill up each of these reservoirs, and then it will come out of those, and it will run down here. It'll go over that liquid bridge there, and then it will go, we're going to join it in on that one. It'll run down, and then it goes right the way through all of those pipes, and it goes back over this way, and then it will join in there, and that will go into the entire network. All of the liquid network, except that that one there is the wrong way round. So I've got to go... I've now got to account for some of these. And actually, that's the only one that's got to be accounted for that's going backwards. Everything else is already in the correct direction. It's the, the correct flow to make it work. And I'm hoping that having all of our fresh water cooled way down like that is going to make a difference. So, you've got to be disabled. You've got to, you've got to be destroyed like that. There. Go like that. I'll let them come along. They, they can, they've, they've done that. They've just dealt with it. Excellent. Go plumbing. Liquid bridge. Now, we've, we've gone and done that. So then I want the, the liquid bridge to go this way. We need to turn you around so that you're going in that direction. And I want a liquid pipe to join on to there, like that. Right, there's that bit. I'll now play them. Those have been destroyed. And they're putting in the pipes there as well. So i got no fresh water running anywhere into the base at the moment. I have got liquid along the floor. Why have I got liquid running along the floor here? Is that because the pipes broke? It's possibly because the pipes broke. It's, it, surely it can't be this one leaking. Converts water into oxygen and hydrogen. Yeah. It doesn't normally leak. So I'm not quite sure why I'm leaking like a sieve here, but it is. Uh, I'll do that. And then I've got more liquid running absolutely everywhere. I got liquid running everywhere up here. And over here as well. Let's get rid of that lot. I'll deal with I'll deal with the rest of that in a bit. So that's not connected up there yet, but it is connected up over here. It's running into these and then we'll go into the liquid reservoirs and out the bottom of them. It goes straight through out the bottom of the liquid reservoirs and then it goes on further. And it'll come over to here and then it will stop. That's as far as we're going to get. So I look into my plumbing overlay. Uh, if I go to ventilation plumbing... And now we're going into here. So this one is now starting to fill up. Right there. Logic activation parameters. So that's filling up, and it's got a whole load of germs in there. And that's the, the temperature of the water is 28 degrees. It's saying pipe block, storage capacity 5 tons. 
thousand kilos. Right, so it's a noisy contraption. It's busy sucking out all of the water out of here. So the other thing that we want to do is we want to now switch this one on to enable that building. And that's going to allow that to cycle through. This is now cycling through up here. It's actually just sucked out the rest of the water on there. This is the bit that I'm interested in. In particular, is the temperature overlays. Because this is going to fill up these three. And then it should go through. It should stay in there long enough to actually clean everything. It's the temperature overlay that I'm particularly interested in. Is And also the contents here. That's... 27.3 degrees, the water in that pipe right there. This water in here is slowing down quite a bit. That one has yet to be... Well, it doesn't have any temperature. It doesn't have any power. Um, let's, let's, let's leave it going. So the temperature of the water coming in here is already cool. It's cooler than what the room is. The abyssalite is quite a high temperature thing. There is a food shortage. Contents of that pipe are empty. Contents here, water at 15 degrees compared to the water coming in, which is 28 degrees. It's dropped by more than 10 degrees. See, it is warming up now a little bit. We look back here, it's... it's no, it's hovering at around 17. So it's already warming the water. It's, it's already making a difference to the water in here. So if we go on up this way and we have a look at the water that's coming up there, liquid pipe contents 16 degrees. That's a significant difference. Now it's the water up here that I'm wondering. That is at 33.7 and the temperature of that water is 33.7 as well. So we, we need the entire thing to cycle around. I need all of that water to be cycling around so that we can fully make use of the cooling system. Down to 13 degrees in the pipes there. And that's great and all. It, it means that everything going into the base is going to start cooling it down. Temperature overlay. I've got some high temperatures over this side. And these pipes coming in here, I've got water there at 20 degrees is considerably lower than what it has been previously. That's at 27.8. So it, it's quite low in temperature here. You've got no power, that water sieve. So that is a little bit of a problem there. Um, and this is going to be our main problem through all of this, is that we've just not got enough. I've got ice up there. And it's this temperature in here. There, I've, I've got liquid pipe that's polluted water that's running away from there are we going to start to see a difference with everything that's going on I've, I've not got any building projects going on at the moment we have got a food shortage and we appear to have a well we're idle at the moment so i'm sort of thinking that we need to do something else for coal I think the best thing that we can do for coal is up here. Right, I'll pause this now. So, that's starting to work its way around the base. We are going to hopefully see a slight improvement on things working around the base on that. I've got a sage hatch in here. I've got a regular hatch. They're cramped, but they are happy. I've got one sage hatchling egg there. Actually thinking I should execute that one. That's a sage hatch. It's an adult. I'm going to take that one down. And then I also want to connect this one in right here. No egg selected. So we're going to go with you. I'm not going to take the sage egg. I'm just going to go with a regular hatchling egg if I can. There isn't one available. Incubate continuous, continuous on there. And then I'll go over to here. So that that one there, I'm, I'm going to disconnect that one. And instead of running it on there, because I've got a potential load of 870 watts on here. So if I, instead of running it on there, if I was to go and take a bit of power, and I was to take a wire, and I run... Okay, I don't really know what I did there. Um, <laughs> not really sure what that was all about. Uh, if, if I was to go and take a wire from 
here, join that one on there, and bring that one over and connect it up onto there. And then I want to simply snip that wire on there. Combat 12. Yeah, that's just the sage hatch. There. Right, that should allow me join those together. We should get more coal being generated up this way because these guys hopefully will lay another egg. They're groomed. It makes people happy if they can come in. They can do the grooming. We're picking up bits of coal. If we go over there. I will just priority 12. Uh, I want to pick up. That's K, isn't it? There. There. Pick that one up. Someone come in and grab that, if you could. You're going to get that? Yep, yeah, okay. He's, he's picked up the meat there. That is really useful. These guys in here, they are not cramped anymore. So one of them should lay an egg, which will get put up into there. And then I've got another station up there. So I need a critter feeder to go up into that bit, which is under food. Critter feeder, and I will drop one of those in there like that. So this critter feeder to sandstone. Right in here. Hatch and hatchling. And that's the same. So all I gotta do is just basically copper 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 it. Copy that one, and it'll do everything that I want it to do. You got no power. I kinda need to prioritize power going into I got no power anywhere in the base. And this is Started to become more of an urgent problem. Why are you... Why is this all cold? Oh. Wait a minute. Contents might... The, because it's gone to a negative temperature... Cold damage. Negative temperatures on these pipes are causing me some serious problems. That one there is full. Uh, this is this is a bit of an issue, isn't it? I have a way I think that I can pull some liquid through. Got an I I got an idea here. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. If I take a liquid reservoir right there, like that, and. I'm just going to leave that liquid reservoir right where it is. And then if I go with the plumbing and I go with a liquid bridge right here. And then I take that one and I run it up into that liquid reservoir. It should pull water through all of this lot. That's kind of what I'm hoping. Put you into there like that. Put you over to there like that. I'm hoping that's just going to pull a bit of water through and it will encourage the water to run through here just to make sure, absolutely certain, that it does do that. I'm also going to go on here, plumbing, a uh, liquid pipe in here, break that one so that it does pull the water through that section. There. That's what I know. And if I can pull the water through that section, in theory, I should get the cooler temperatures coming in through there. Uh, this is a bit of an issue. It's getting... It's too cold in here. It's too, it's too cold for the, like the, the pipes here. I've, I've got some cold damage going on there. Because i got some major problems. I didn't realise that this was such a problem. Yeah, it's, it's because of how cold everything gets in there. I had no idea that that was even a thing. If I, is there a way to get around that? What have I got? I got liquid radiant carries liquid allowing extreme temperature exchange. Insulated minimal temperature exchange. Right, I did put a bit of radiated pipe in here, didn't I? Let me try putting radiant liquid pipe in here. there. That seems to be where the, the main problem is. If, if I put the radiant liquid pipe in here, does it just upgrade the pipe or does it put two pipes in? I 
don't know if that... I did just hear my thingy yelling at me. The, the water in this base is... Like, the, the amount that I've got everywhere is ridiculous. I'm, I'm choosing at the moment to generally ignore all of the water that is running through the base. We, well, I do need to do something about it. I, I know that. But for the most part, I'm just choosing to ignore it. Oh! Another thing I'm supposed to do. People that uh, I've, I've been asked to do is go to my options and graphics and because I'm on such a high thing here increase my user interface let me go to 150% I'll see what that's is that better completely forgot to do that at the beginning of this little session but people have been asking me to do this and I've done let's, let's try that right is that is that better I've increased the user interface by quite a lot. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that a lot better. I'm really sorry I should have remembered that earlier. Um, I didn't. Now, this radiant liquid pipe. Copper. I did have some more here, I'm sure of it. I thought I put a piece in. It just says liquid pipe. Let's, let's see what they're going to do in here. The building radiant liquid. There's just standard radiant liquid pipe. So does radiant liquid pipe take damage? Food shortage, attribute increase. And they're doing what they're doing in here. Ladder. Radiant liquid pipe. No, they're, they're actually also getting damaged. Uh... I haven't finished building this bit up here either. Which I kind of need to do to be able to pull stuff through here. There's still 34 degrees in there. The liquid pipe is still 34. The contents of it. And I'm getting cold damage on these. Okay, the cold damage on that isn't helping. I'm still getting cold damage on these liquid pipes. Plus these guys are all really cold. Which doesn't help anything. What am I supposed to do about that then? I need a pipe that can function in cold weather. That's that's what we need. We, we need a pipe that can function well and in cold weather. If I, if I can have a pipe that will do that, that would be fantastic. And then the water is at 3.7 degrees there. There's, well, at least it's, it's warmed up a little tiny bit. That's because it's flowing into here. So it's flowing through there. Contents are at 20 degrees, which means, in theory, the hydroponic farm ought to be lowering in temperature. Temperature overlay. Why are you not dropping in temperature? You should be. I've got cold water here pouring in. It's at 12 degrees. 9 degrees. 8 degrees. That's, that's really lowering down in temperature now. The temperature of the water going through that pipe is 6 degrees in there. But this hydroponic farm, that bristle blossom is still saying 32. Although that temperature is lowering down. 29 in there. Uh, temperatures are starting to come down. It's slow, admittedly. But they are starting to come down. I've got icy cold water running up through here now. Uh, contents at 16 degrees. So it's making a little bit of a difference. I've got the radiant pipe in here. Now, whether that's a good thing or not, I don't really know. There is a food shortage. We've got a attribute increase. We've got a printing available over there. Bristle blossoms are down to 31, 30 degrees. This is it's starting to come down. And I'm hauling the water into here as fast as I possibly can. Which I'm hoping means that this water down here... That's at 16 degrees in there. 29. And now suddenly they're all growing again. This is fantastic. They're at last. They're growing. Temperatures are just starting to get right in there to get the bristle blossoms growing again, which is going to start improving everything else. 
So next, let's go in and have a look in here and choose a blueprint. What do we got? We got blossom seeds. I got more duplicates. I'm going to reject all this time. I'm going to get rid of them. I am, however, going to go and have a look at our duplicate skills. What do we got in here? I got loads and loads of skills everywhere. So let's start off with... Lindsay, right here. You, I can, I can take a little bit for Lindsay. Advanced research. We got anything else that I can go with? Improved construction. The morale need on that is kind of, um, well, I, I don't know. I'm gonna go with plumbing. Let's go with plumbing on you. You in here. Super hard digging. The more people that can do the super hard digging, the better. Um, crop tending. Let's let's give another. Let's have some more crop tending, and then we've got you grilling and cooking up fundamentals. They would be good. Ellie is is our farmer, but she's also highly stressed. So I'm not going to do anything with Ellie for a minute. She's she's got enough stress on her plate. Uh, Frankie down here. He's seriously stressed. Stressed. Too stressed. You're doing all right. You're not doing great, though, are you? Uh, now let's have someone else who can help work the grill. Nails, stressed. You're looking better. We'll do cleaning, improving, carrying, grilling. Let's have, let's have another cook. Improved construction probably would have been better for him. Yeah, all right. Well, never mind. Um... Advanced research, art, cooking, more farming. More farmers are going to help. Your morale, need, you, you, you got morale through the roof. Like you, you're a really generally happy person. I got a person who can do hard digging. We got astronomy research over this side. You're going to do hard digging over there. And then I got Ari over this side who wants to be a cook, wants to be a tinkerer. Uh, we'll give you that one so that you're really happy with that. You here are fundamentals. Improved construction. You can take that one. Right. I'm I'm reasonably happy that we we do have to start working on improving the morale of all of our people in here. It's it's not great. It definitely has room for improvement. So I'm going to go with the mop for a start, and I'm going to start cleaning up a few of these areas because the spills that we've got everywhere are a teensy bit ridiculous. I'll do the mopping all the way through here. Mop everything up like that and mop everything up down here as well. So that they will go and clean up a whole load of these items. And it will hopefully improve everything in here. I'm also going to do some mopping in there and more, more mopping. There's too much liquid all the way down there. Now, the problem I've got is that this... Radiant liquid pipe is taking damage. As soon as the temperature drops below freezing, it's starting to take damage. And it doesn't seem to be anything I can do about that. It's constantly taking cold damage. So pipes take cold damage, which, I mean, it does make sense because the water is dropping below freezing. This is an issue for us. So what, what, what can we do about this? I'm using up mountains of copper in here. I don't think there's anything... I'd, so there's no point in me doing anything on there, so I'm going to change that back to that. I mean, I suppose I'm taking the most damage up here. If I was to change that to an insulated pipe, would that improve the situation? I'm, not, I'm losing my temperature exchange. By putting it as an insulated pipe, I'm losing temperature exchange... But there seems to be that one section there that is the bit that's taking the damage. So if by insulating it and keeping that temperature at, at just above freezing, is that going to make a difference? Maybe, just maybe, that will help things out and we will stop having all of this pipe damage. And we'll still get a good enough temperature exchange in here to keep everything running. Now, this is all, under, this is all in chlorine, these liquid reservoirs right in here. I'm going to have a look at that. Um, reservoirs cannot receive manually delivered resources. Water, 0 kilos, 28. You in here. Apparently, I got nothing in there. 
means it's all up in this one. And you've got germs. And this here has growth halted. Oh, it's illumination. Temperature is 27 degrees. That is really good. The temperature has come down by a long, long way already. Look at that. That is so much better. We're already seeing vast improvements here on temperature. Let's get rid of that one. And then I want to go into here. And I want to copy the settings. And I want to put it onto that one. So they go and fill that up. And then I've got absolutely no power anyway. So I still need to get more coal. Now, I'm hoping that that's going to help up there to get some coal, but it's not wonderful. These need to keep working so that they can produce food. We've got a food shortage, but nobody has starved just yet. So I need to get coal. That's got to be our next main priority is, is finding the coal. Now, I've got, I know that I've got coal down there, and I've also got some coal up here. There's not very much. There are bits of it dotted around. Uh, there's a little bit sort of going through there. There's a little section of coal right in here. 600 kilos, 600. There's a few groups of 600 kilos. Um, hmm. What about out over this side? There. There is a huge great big section of coal right there. I think we'll work through to get that if we can. We can go along the, the the roof of this one. That can turn that room into a farm. I need to just check the room overlay here. That is classed as a farm in there. So we will start just doing a little bit more with the base work. So I want a mesh tile there to start with. One, two, three, four, like that. And then leave a gap of one, two, three, four, and do the same again there. And then do that there. Do that up there. Three, four. Here. One, two, three, four. Like that. And we'll leave it at that, I think. We won't go any higher than that. And then we've got these. So that's going to become a mesh tile in here. And then I've just got to work my way through and do the same on each of these bits. Now this is a bit that is going to be a little bit more difficult because I've also got to make sure that I've got the gas in the right place. Plus I've gone and done all of that wrong up there. Because I did it in the wrong place just down there, didn't I? That was a bit daft. One, two, three, four, and then do it. Uh, one, two, three, four... Then do it. I'm going five there. I shouldn't be. Three, four, and that's the fifth one that's going to go there. And I'll leave it at that, I think. As long as I'm leaving a gap of four in between each layer. I've got that right. Okay, so lots and lots of coal able to come through. That section there is sealed away from this. So this is like we're just extending this out. And then possibly that pump then will remove it and we'll stick it up further up. It might be a, a better way of doing this because it, it will eventually kind of work its way up through there. So then we're going to go from this section. It's going to go across. I need to get rid of that one and that one. Go back into our base. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for for a little while. We need to let the replicants rest. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And I am just going to drag out this farewell just a tiny little bit. Just so that there is enough space and time on the screen to put up a couple lots of you absolutely wonderful supporters of the channel. You should be seeing some of your names coming up now. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.